Hello everybody from Plant Reviews, today is 12th of April and I'm talking now about one of my uh, favorite uh, daffodil, uh, Narcissus killara, uh, that was raised by Henry Selkirk uh, in uh, Australia. Uh, New South Wales uh, uh, and registered before 1910. Uh, the seed parent is Grand Monarch and the pollen parent is Empress and this uh, daffodil belongs to the, um, uh, the Tazetta daffodils, uh, uh, the group 8 of the daffodil classification. Uh, the flowers uh, uh, in my case uh, are about six centimeters across yeah five six centimeters across and uh, they are uh, white uh, I would say yeah uh, ivory white uh, on the tepals while the corona the cup is a bright yellow this is a medium uh, daffodil uh, I have it in a pot and it is about 30 centimeters tall even if some plants have a smaller flower stem as you can see however uh, uh, most of them, three bulbs I would say, are about 30 centimeters tall with a uh, flower stem that uh, is uh, a little bit taller than the leaves. Uh, it is uh, uh, one of uh, my uh, absolute favorite daffodils, I have to say and uh, there's not many daffodils uh, registered in Australia, I believe, at least it's not... Uh, um, uh, I don't have many uh, Australian daffodils uh, and uh, on daffseek.org it is the main um, website for daffodil classification, you don't find many um, uh, raised in Australia, but certainly this one uh, that was raised again by um, um, a razor in Australia, uh, a breeder in Australia, is definitely one of the uh, most exquisite daffodils for fragrance. The, the fragrance is uh, kind of fruity and sweet. Uh, it reminds me the uh, Odoratus, but uh, the um, uh, maybe a little bit sweeter than the Odoratus and uh, the flowers are a lot bigger by the way uh, and usually produces between three and four flowers per stem in some cases five as in this one I apologize because some of the flowers have been munched eaten by slugs and snails but I have, luckily some of them like these ones really really uh, beautiful very very nice and uh, the fragrance is uh, yeah, definitely fruity, kind of uh, mango, yeah I would say mango and pineapple uh, with also a sweet scent, it reminds me kind of the um, odoratus and uh, it is a gorgeous fragrance really, you have to smell it to, to know it, but uh, it is uh, definitely uh, one of the best daffodils I can recommend for fragrance. It is quite intense, uh, not as intense as uh, uh, say Narcissus Tazetta species uh, or uh, some other varieties uh, like uh, Avalanche or Geranium, but uh, uh, I would say at least a medium strength, so I can still recommend it in a fragrant garden, especially because of the type of fragrance this fruit scent is uh, quite uh, peculiar and not very common, not even in Tazetta daffodils, so that you usually have a floral and sweet scent, there's uh, very few Tazetta daffodils uh, and very few daffodils in general and uh, uh, if they have this fruity fragrance uh, they are Tazettas, I don't uh, have uh, any other, at least so far I didn't uh, find this fruity fragrance in uh, any other group uh, other than Tazettas, uh, Tazetta varieties and even in Tazettas very very few uh, daffodils have uh, this uh, kind of fragrance, very few varieties. Uh, Narcissus killara is a, a Narcissus that takes the name after uh, the uh, suburb uh, where Harry Selkirk had his uh, garden and uh, this is indeed Killara, there is a suburb uh, in uh, north west uh, Sydney uh, so New South Wales uh, and um, again uh, is not 
but uh, this variety is quite difficult to uh, find. Uh, I never found it in any garden center. So I ordered it from Ron Scamp. Uh, that is uh, in the United Kingdom, where I live, probably the best uh, um, daffodil uh, nursery and online uh, shop you can find in the United Kingdom and has uh, a lot of uh, daffodils from the most common to some really, really rare. Uh, this one I didn't know anything other than it was a tazetta so I decided to go for for the tazettas because I love fragrance and uh, um, last year I found out that uh, my preferred daffodils for fragrance were actually tazettas so I decided this year to try as many as possible I realized that some tazettas actually have not uh, much of a fragrance or sometimes they are a uh, kind of a pungent fragrance and I found usually these tazettas have uh, John Killas in their uh, ancestry it's like the two um, these two groups uh, sometimes when they met when they are uh, cross-pollinated uh, the fragrance is kind of uh, um, affected because uh, usually the jonquil has uh, a kind of some jonquil is kind of a pungent uh, scent more like a licorice and peppermint but some very pungent and i think uh, this is a dominant trait when you uh, cross with the tazettas and also tazettas usually are more fragrant than jonquillas and uh, when crossed with jonquillas i found that many uh, lose, uh, most of the offspring lose uh, the typical strength in fragrance. This one, uh, there's, uh, there are some exceptions obviously, uh, but uh, this is the general rule I found. Uh, anyway, uh, you will find in my uh, YouTube channel, uh, I have a playlist of the most fragrant daffodils and the best scented daffodils. Uh, so I put them together uh, that obviously all of them have a lovely fragrance. Uh, it can be more or less intense uh, you will find the description of a fragrance in the comments of my uh, of each videos and uh, obviously yeah you can have a look if you like uh, like me uh, fragrant daffodils or in general fragrant plants i have another playlist on fragrant plants as well uh, about this daffodil as usual for uh, daffodils uh, the bulbs need to be planted in um, autumn and uh, in about 10 centimeters deep or 10 centimeters apart and uh, well in a pot obviously you are going to pack them a little bit tighter and in this case obviously remember to fertilize the uh, ground properly to nourish the bulb for next year's blooming the leaves will start sprouting between uh, autumn and early winter and this variety will bloom in early spring with these gorgeous beautifully uh, beautifully contrasting yeah with a beautiful contrasting color flowers you can see this uh, white uh, candid white and uh, this uh, very bright yellow corona and most importantly with uh, for me <laughs> even more importantly with with this gorgeous 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 uh, scent a fragrance really that few other daffodils uh, uh, have and uh, um, about uh, the uh, blooming um, it is uh, uh, usually the tazettas are able to bloom about uh, for a couple of weeks uh, each flower stem lasts one week and a half sometimes a couple of weeks and the um, after the flowers fade the leaves will continue to uh, be green for a few more weeks and then they will die down between uh, I would say late spring and early summer uh, when the bulbs go dormant uh, and uh, when the bulbs go dormant uh, don't need to be uh, watered or fertilized uh, you need to start watering and fertilizing then in uh, autumn uh, in case obviously uh, there's not a lot much water around usually the United Kingdom there's plenty of rain from autumn to spring so usually I don't usually need to water my daffodils and uh, in uh, summer also in case uh, you uh, decide to uh, change location to the daffodils you need you can change you can lift the bulbs and also you will find that probably uh, you will get some offsets daffodils uh, uh, multiply more or less rapidly uh, depends on the variety so in order to avoid the clumps that are too tight you can decide to lift the bulbs and then um, divide them and plant them in some other places in the garden in some uh, divide them in more pots or uh, obviously uh, make a wonderful gift to your friends and family 
uh, if you like. So that's uh, that's it really for uh, this daffodil. Uh, Tazetta daffodils usually uh, like temperature a bit warmer than uh, most other daffodils. Uh, I live in uh, USDA zone 8 in uh, Kent, that is the southeast of England and uh, uh, it is almost a Mediterranean climate I would say we have uh, pretty dry summers and uh, um, pretty wet uh, autumn uh, winter and spring with uh, uh, temperature that uh, rarely go below zero uh, usually uh, we have temperatures below zero for I would say less than 10-15 days uh, per year and uh, even then um, not very uh, much below zero usually uh, about minus five or minus seven and only very cold years like this year 2021 the winter 2021 has been uh, pretty cold but last year we rarely uh, we rarely reached the temperatures below uh, zero so uh, and actually I'm not even sure if we ever reached last year temperatures below zero anyway uh, surely last year it didn't snow at all this year instead it snowed for a couple of days anyway uh, that's, uh, that's the thing I live in zone 8 so this, this stuff for this is definitely hardy in zone 8 and uh, zone 9 uh, I believe Sydney when this stuff for this where this stuff for this was raised uh, is either zone 9 or zone 10 uh, so uh, this is uh, surely a stuff for this hardy between zone 8 and 9 uh, because Sydney is definitely warmer than uh, Ashford in Kent where I live as usual, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, it would be great if you can uh, uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video and my other videos on my YouTube channel, it would be great if you can please subscribe in this way. Obviously, uh, you are it is completely free for you. Uh, but uh, um, subscribing, uh, you um, get YouTube a knowledge that you like my videos. And the more subscribers I have, the more YouTube promote my uh, channel on the platform. As usual, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.